If you want to learn more about AnyCast RP, be sure to check out our Juno's Multicast Routing course. For full details, just visit juniper.net slash courses and search for the course in the keyword search box. The subject also appears on the JNCIP Enterprise Certification Exam, so pay attention. Now let's get to your learning bite. This learning bite will cover AnyCast RP. My name is David Williams, and I'm with Juniper Education Services. The concept of an RP in a PIM sparse mode network is that there can only be one rendezvous point per multicast group. This requirement ensures that source and receiver always use the same RP so that they can connect through it. A single RP per multicast group creates a single point of failure, which is something to avoid in a correctly designed network. A single RP also limits options for load balancing in the case of high volume groups. To allow load balancing within a group and to increase network resiliency, AnyCast RP was developed. The concept of AnyCast in general is to have multiple devices performing the exact same role in the network and with the exact same UniCast address. We'll refer to this UniCast address as the AnyCast address. The clients connect to the nearest device with the required AnyCast address. If the nearest device fails, the clients can connect to other devices that have the same AnyCast address. As soon as the interior gateway protocol has converged, the clients can connect to the new or nearest AnyCast device. AnyCast RP allows for multiple RPs in the network that share the UniCast address that every router associates with the rendezvous point role. The rendezvous point which receives the register message from the source sends a copy of the register message to the other rendezvous points. Each local DR router communicates with the nearest RP about source or receiver information. Of course, this creates a receiver connect across different RPs, which we originally used MSDP for. The main advantage of AnyCast RP is that you can now have redundant RPs per group and that in case of failures, the convergence time is much lower. The AnyCast RP feature allows load sharing within a group, which can be useful for bigger deployments. To let the source and receiver connect to each other, there must be a way for the rendezvous points to exchange information about sources, the receivers, or both. Previously, we used MSDP to exchange source information between rendezvous points, which we can use for interdomain multicast designs. The disadvantages of MSDP are that it only supports IPv4 and that it requires additional protocol configuration. A more recent option is to use AnyCast PIM for the exchange of source information. Therefore, no MSDP is needed for AnyCast RP to function. This solution also is useful if you must support IPv6. So here we show three rendezvous points inside of a PIM sparse mode domain. We're using an AnyCast RP address of 10.100.254.1 and we'll share that address by all rendezvous points. Each RP also has its own unique address. In other words, other routing functions would not work correctly because of the duplicate router IDs. Each rendezvous point needs its own unique IP address so that its other protocols function correctly, such as the IGP and BGP. To ensure that the unique address is used as the primary address on the loopback interface, the primary keyword can be added to the address. Another way of ensuring that no duplicate router IDs are created in the network is to hard code the router ID on each router to the unique address by using the set routing options router ID command. On each of the rendezvous points 
a second IP address is used by all rendezvous points to signal the RP role. Our example address for the second address is 10.100.254.1. All routers must learn what the rendezvous point address is in the network when using AnyCast RP. All discovery mechanisms are possible. You can use static, auto RP, or bootstrap router, but typically static is used. Static RP is simple, and with the addition of AnyCast RP is now also redundant. Here's the configuration of one of our rendezvous points. Three steps are needed to configure any cast RP on the rendezvous points. Step one, configure the IP address on the loopback interface, including both the unique address of 10.100.1.1 and the AnyCast address of 10.100.254.1. Configure local RP candidacy. The configuration is performed with the set protocols PIM RP local command. We also enabled an MSDP mesh group peering with the other AnyCast RP routers. Okay, this is AnyCast RP with MSDP. If we're going to do AnyCast RP with AnyCast PIM, then we have the same steps. We configure both IP addresses on the loopback. We configure the local RP candidacy, and then we enable AnyCast PIM between the other AnyCast RP routers. We do this with the set protocols PIM RP AnyCast PIM RP set command, and you note that we list our own local router under the local address, and we list the other AnyCast RP routers under the RP set hierarchy. We're going to be configuring an example of AnyCast RP. So the highlights on the lab, on the left-hand side at the bottom, we have a source of 10.0.101.2 and 10.0.101.3. Our receivers are through the right uh, vSwitch device. The receiver multicast addresses are 224.7.7.1 and 224.8.8.1. The devices serving as the rendezvous points in our example lab will be VR2 at the top left and VR6 at the top right. In a previous learning byte, we configured MSDP to connect two separate domains together. We had in our topology a group of VRs, VR1 through VR6, as well as the default instance. We were using VR2 as the rendezvous point and also VR6 as the rendezvous point. VR2 is connected to the source side. VR6 is connected to the receiver side. And we used MSDP to connect the two together. Unfortunately, if you're going to also be using IPv6 along with IPv4, MSDP is not going to be the solution that you will use. We are now going to configure PIM AnyCast with AnyCast RP. Okay. Our AnyCast RPs are configured on VR2 and VR6. Um, we'll just do a quick review of that. So um, let's check the loopback interface. And we can assume that PIM is already running on all of our devices. So unit 2, which maps to our VR2, our candidate rendezvous point, is configured as primary. And 10.1.1 is the AnyCast address. We have the same configuration on our other rendezvous point. 172.16.6.1 is the primary. And 10.1.1.1 is the AnyCast. Okay. If we omit the primary statement, we're going to have the inverse happen, where 10.1.1.1 will actually become the primary address. And that's not what we want. We want 10.1.1.1 to be used for any cast. All right, so in this configuration, we're not going to need MSDP anymore. Um, so let's go under uh, edit routing instances for a second and just remove that. So uh, delete, uh, for instance, VR2 protocols MSDP. And then we'll do the same. We'll say delete VR. If I can type VR6 protocols 
m sdp. There we go. Okay, so that's removed. We can commit at this point. Because this particular lab, we had some previous multicast configuration. Hopefully, we don't have to refresh anything. We'll just keep the previous state and we'll just do a check and see what we see in terms of join status. So our next command will be a run show pim join. Okay, and we do see some group joins here. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step. What we're gonna do is we're gonna delete the current RP configuration for VR2 and VR6, and we're going to enable PIM Anycast on VR2 and VR6. All right, so let's go under edit VR2 protocols PIM. Okay, so we'll just say delete the rendezvous point. And we'll set up a local rendezvous point. We're going to be configuring PIM Anycast. So set RP local family inet. You notice the difference. With PIM Anycast, it requires the additional step of configuring a family. So we'll say family inet address 10.1.1.1. Okay. We will have to then configure Anycast PIM. All right, so syntax set RP local family inet Anycast PIM and the local address is ours, or VR2, which is 172.16.2.1. Okay. You notice that this is not the RP address. This is the actual local address. We'll then configure the RP set, which would consist of the other RPs as part of our Anycast group. In this case, we only have one, which will be our uh, VR6. So set RP local family inet anycast pim RP set and the address for the other device in our group on our anycast group is 172.16.6.1 all right, we have to do the same for VR6, which is our other rendezvous point. Okay, so let's uh, delete the rendezvous point, and then we'll set it back up, RP local family inet and our anycast address 10.1.1.1 and then set rp local family inet anycast pim and the local address would be 172.16. 6.1. Okay, then we have to do our address set. Set RP local family inet anycast pim RP set and the address is VR2 172.16.2.1. Okay? Now, for brevity, we're not going to do an example with IPv6, but of course, it would be a similar configuration using IPv6 addresses along with family INET6. All right, so let's go ahead and commit our configuration. All right, hopefully we should see some PIM joins inside of the default instance.
Okay, so we should see the two groups, 224.771, okay, and 224.881. It's kind of scrolled up there. All right. Okay. So, again, sometimes the PIM joins take a little bit of time. So the question then becomes, what's the difference with what we just did, right? And the real configuration, what we just did, is we accomplished the same thing that we did with MSDP, connecting the two groups together, but we used PIM Anycast, which can support IPv4 and IPv6 addressing. Thank you for watching the demonstration of PIM Anycast. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.